I think I'm going to call it the Sharknado effect. Did you guys ever see that stupid movie, Sharknado? Yeah, I loved it, Nutton. Oh, please. Ugh. I watched a clip of it, and it was so stupid. And it wasn't really funny either. I mean, you know, maybe a 10-second clip. You're like, okay, sharks falling out of the sky, chomping on people, chainsaws. Okay, it's like a cartoon. Uh, overall, I'm not going to waste my time. I did not watch the whole movie. No way. Now, when that movie came out, though, Sharknado, people were raving about it on social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Facetube. Oh, it's the coolest, funniest, hippest movie ever. Sharknado. That's That was the hype of Sharknado. Go look at the revenue. How do you like me now? I mean, was it a success financially? No. Will it stand the test of time and pop culture? No. Hey, but social media said it was this way, right? Had to be true. The Sharknado effect. No. Go look at the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes. Just a data point. We see this with all types of things. Movies, songs, politicians, individuals, and gear items. The Sharknado effect. Maybe certain individuals with certain agendas, who knows what they are, will come out and they go, hey, this movie is this way, or this gun is this way, and I'm out to convince the world of this. And so maybe a group think gets traction and it starts snowballing, and pretty, pretty soon there's a worldwide group think on that thing, like Sharknado, but it does not necessarily represent the truth of what's really happening. Welcome to the interweb. Welcome to YouTube. And we just don't play that game here in TMP. Never have. You know. I'm, I've learned a lot about the gun industry. And there's some companies I don't dig that much. Some companies I love. Some are kind of in the middle. But they always get a fair review. Always. And I just put all that nonsense aside, give them a fair review. If the gun's awesome, I'll say so. If it has issues, I'll say that too. The Sharknado effect with the Sentry Arms, RAS 47, goes something like this. Don't buy the gun because it has a cast trunnion. We may look at that later. I was like, huh. Well, there's a lot of parts that are cast on a lot of guns. And I've shot a lot of guns that have a ton of cast parts. And they have performed uh, pretty much perfectly. So just because something's cast doesn't mean it's crap. I don't know. I, I don't know if earlier samples have metallurgy problems. I just don't. I know this one has been pretty good. I'm not a metallurgy expert. I kind of think it's the Sharknado effect on the gun. And so you may see some people in this video in commentary. Oh, great gun. Yeah, I'm not going to buy it. It has a cast trunnion. Well, there's a lot of worse off pack guns that do as well. I think the Polish ones do. They've been great. Tantals, great. Oh, it's got to have a forged trunnion. I, hey, I'm not going to lie. I would like it too. But if it's going to add, you know, $500 to the cost, I'm exaggerating. But even 100 bucks, maybe I don't. I think it'll be fine. From what I know, what I've seen in testing reviewing, well, testing this one, RAS 47, I think it'll be fine. Now, if you're a commercial range operator and you start renting out RAS 47s, that would be a great data point. You know, run 10,000, 20,000 rounds through them and then look at the trunnion. Most of us will never get there. Don't believe the hype on the internet. Don't believe the hype on the forums. Guys just do not shoot that much. They don't. Couple might, but they're going to be making their living shooting, teaching, instructing, commercial ranges. And that's about it. Uh, Sharknado effect. Uh, I love the Sentry Arms RAS 47. I think it's an outstanding gun. I really do. I'm stoked to review it. It's been on my list for a while. I'm trying to flesh out my AK variant rifles playlist. I think I'll make a whole playlist of ones I've reviewed. And we'll look at a, a couple competitive options before I end the video. Uh, I, I don't see it being an issue. You know, so put it in your inventory. Shoot it with confidence. I will say this. When we get to reliability, there were a couple issues. I told you I just, you know, swing and hit the ball as straight as I possibly can. There's a couple issues. I think they're mag magazine related. There you go. 
Now this of course is the MOE version of the RAS 47 by Century Arms, 100% made in the United States. It is my preferred version, order it now before it sells out if you need an AK variant rifle. And by the way, all the ones I've reviewed to this point, I still love. It's funny, I'll review a new AK rifle and go, what about the, the Arsenals? What about the Zestava? Still awesome. C39, still awesome. We were just living in a, you know, a golden era of AK variant rifles. It may get better in the future, I don't know, but it's pretty darn good right now, don't you think? Uh, the MOE version saves me time, saves me money. I recommend you get it too. When it comes to AK rifles, uh, I'm not a purist. I'm a functional guy. I'm all about first cool. I want the weapon system to be adaptive for me and what I like. And that means these days I put on MOE stuff or Magpul stuff, better said. Uh, I'll start back here and then we'll go forward and look at the details. Philosophy of use is standard. You guys know what it is, right, at this point. I mean, here we are coming up on, what, year 10 or so officially from channel creation. Yeah. MOE buttstock, I like it. I don't love it though because it has a very short 12.8 inches length of pull. A lot of guys like that. Uh, it's a Warsaw length uh, length of pull, more or less. Um, I can run it if I'm running a red dot. Maybe some LBE, maybe some winter clothes. In rare circumstances, body armor, short length of pull makes sense. I think most guys love it. It's because they can kind of cradle up to the gun maybe control it better. I'm 6'3", and so I like a little bit longer length of pull. Fortunately, Magpul does make available an extended butt pad. It's called the Enhanced Rubber Butt Pad. It will add, I think, like half inch, maybe 0.7 inches to your length of pull. Probably a little bit of weight. They are very affordable. Uh, I recommend putting it on if you're going to stick with the stock, and you should stick with the stock, I think. It's cost effective. It's excellent. Short length pull is about the only bad thing I can say. It's lighter, by the way. I'm talking about the MOE buttstock on the RAS 47. It's, it's lighter than the Bulgarian NATO length, which is 13.6 ounces. This one right here on my scale when I weighed one naked, 12 ounces. And that's with a standard compartment door on it. Oh, compartment? That's cool. Uh, I'm laughing because I think compartments are kind of a fool's errand because people think when they have a compartment on their AK or their AR that they're dumb if they don't fill it with something. Here's a hint from nothing fancy. Leave it empty. Maybe, just maybe, put a battery for your optic in there. 2032 cell or whatever. That's it. Don't put a cleaning kit in there. Don't put ammunition in there just adds weight and you don't want weight on your gun. SAWC is huge, huge. Uh, yeah, I don't put anything in here, or maybe a battery. The nice thing about the compartment on the MOE buttstock is you can put on an extended or higher cheek rest. And I think they come in two different sizes. That is a big plus. Because then if you have a rail up here and your scope, which you can see back there in the RS regulate mount, that's a VXR 3x9 by Leopold. It makes sense. And even the lowest mount optics rails will come in second place to an AR-15 as far as height, in my experience. The higher cheek rest can help. So leave that empty. Uh, it's a great stock. It looks good. It's functional. It's tough. Like I said, it's lightweight. Here's a single point cup if you want to do that. Standard sling attachment here. Then this isn't really rubber, it's a nice polymer that's not grabby, well done Magpul. By the way, go look at the top there, that's my video on recommended AK modifications. That's just where I'm at now. Again, it's pretty much centered on first cool. How, does, how can I improve the weapon system for me? And that whole video, I talk about this stock, the MOE, and certain modifications I've done on other guns. Uh, I do like on the RAS 47, the receiver is kind of thick. If my conversion is correct, almost 1.6 millimeters in thickness, as you can see. It's 1 16th inch thick. So that's pretty stiff for a stamped receiver. And here's where I am, stamped versus milled. I like stamped. Wait, you guessed it. It's just going with a milled receiver, does it add that much accuracy? In my my experience, not really. 
Not really. It, there's so many other variables, and the AK is not inherently an accurate weapon system. And for me, I'd much rather lose a half a pound or so, maybe just four ounces. And that's where I'm at. So I like the stamped receiver. It does not have X and Y reinforcements on the trigger pin. So if that's important to you, well, think about it. There's a magwell indentation here. Um, well, I'll talk about reliability, just a, an observation with a certain mag. I don't, I don't want to do it yet, but uh, it's adequate. Here's the movement with the Magpul magazine. This one is Cerakoted by myself and FDE, super sick. It came black, and one is included, a 30-rounder, non-steel reinforced type with your Magpul Edition Rouse 47. Great choice of magazine. This is my favorite mag. Not the steel reinforced one. You don't need the steel. It adds weight. It's kind of cool if you leave it lo loaded, but these standard mag pulls are pretty good. Again, if you're at a commercial range, high, high volume, maybe you'd go into a Bulgarian magazine, steel reinforced, uh, or get the mag pull steel reinforced. Just a thought. Uh, great job on the receiver, like we said. Included optics rail, and this is where it will beat, in my opinion, the Zastava PAP series of AK variant rifles, like the M70. Now those did have a side rail on it and something I learned in extended testing is it was kind of skitty wampus. So it would not center or allow the optic, whatever it was, red dot or scope to be centered. So I had to take one off and remount my own and it was a pain in the butt, took a lot of time, did it and solved the problem. Uh, I'd much rather have it come from the factory done. Totally aligned, done. Now this is a longer AK optic trail. I do like the shorter ones because these ones weigh about four ounces. The other shorter ones weigh two ounces. But Sentry will say, well, it gives you a lot more gripping surface for your optics mount. And I can understand that. That's just a preference I have though. How about the trigger? Uh, how about it's pretty good? Notice I did not say outstanding. It's not, it's pretty good. Sentry will brag about uh, it has undergone like a 15,000 round test. I have no doubts about that. I'm sure it has. It's crisp. It's single stage. Uh, it pulls, I think, around six-ish. Let's see what it does here. Yeah, about six pounds. It's good. It's a good trigger. It's not a braided spring inside there. It's a regular spring. I see that more and more in accessories. I'm going to show you my favorite trigger for AKs, though. Not going to do it here. Love this extended magazine paddle. Oh my gosh, I just love it. Uh, I mentioned that in that AK accessories video that I did. I, I just love it. It beats a lot of other competitive options. Why they're not all doing this, I don't know. You can actually actuate it from the firing position if you want with your index finger. It just makes it nice. Nice. A little bit longer du dust cover on the RAS 47. Standard sights, which is to say they're okay. You know, I, 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 I'm not a huge fan of the big fat front blade on any AK variant rifle. My understanding is that front blade is supposed to tell you when there is a man-sized object at 300 meters. What? I mean, that's that's what I read. I was like, heck, that that front sight is so fat, it, it may cover up a Sherman tank at 300 meters. Says me in my own shooting. Maybe I'm off, but it's it's fat. I'm gonna put a thinner front sight on it. KNS Precision, I'll zero it at 100 yards, call it good, and just use it as BOIS, and I'll either put an Ultimac on the front, or run an RS Regulate, or a different mount uh, with a scope on the side. Uh, but you know, as far as the quality of it, and I'm looking at it, the machining, uh, the sight base, and for that matter, the gas block, which is also, looks like, looks to be a cast part, <clears throat> it's pretty good. Now, if you remember that Zastava I brought on camera, that was a milled part, if memory serves. Super high quality. I love the Zastava rifles. Uh, the barrel, by the way, is relatively thick. It's not the pencil barrel you see on a lot of the Russian rifles. Not to say that's bad, because I still have those rifles and I love them. But I'm kind of prejudiced, as I've said in a lot of videos, against super skinny barrels when it comes to high volume of fire when I'm shooting it a lot. Heating up, stringing, eh, it's just me, it's a weirdness. Nitride coated, from what I know, it's not CHF, cold hammer forged, light as the Stavas are. But that being said, it did shoot, as you will see, more accurately than that M70. The MOE handguard. I love this thing. 
probably my favorite overall handguard currently. I think there are only two ways you can make it better. One is to make it lighter. There's that drum I'm beating on all the time. Make it lighter. You know, also increase the traction of it because it is kind of slick. Yeah, I know there's some ribs molded in it. But what I'd like to see, and someone's probably going to make it from this video. You're welcome. Make a few bucks off of this. Is an insert cut out specifically for the AK or the Magpul AK MOE handguard. And so it will lay over in between these ribs made out of skateboard tape, maybe a synthetic suede material, and it will be vented and completely die cut for this and it will provide really good traction on the front. Now it is M-Lock capable. I'm talking about the handguard, so you can put all types of different accessories here. Again, don't go crazy, only put what's necessary. For me, that means, as you'll see with this other gun I'll throw on the table, probably a light mount, maybe a bipod VG mount, and I'm talking a very short section of polymer rail right here, and that would pretty much mitigate the traction problem if you're running a VG right here. The thing you gotta watch out is clearance between your swing out AK magazine. So you gotta love the handguard, and again, this version versus the wood versions of the RAS 47, and also they have a very cool pistol version and SBR versions, uh, 10.6 inch barrels and 12.4 inches, uh, about 7.6 pounds for those ones. At least that's what the manufacturer says. Very cool. This is my favorite, favorite. Uh, nothing much to say about the front here. Standard front sight base. Uh, I will say this, the quality of the gun, again, 100% made in the U.S., looks to be pretty excellent. Unlike a Wasser, which sometimes I'll bring off the rack and I'll look at it and I just go, God, this looks rough. It just looks bad. I mean, I've cracked open wassers and seen rust on them and it's just sloppy, bad stocks. Uh, not just wassers, but all types of AKs and I just walk away. I'm not motivated by a gun like this. This gun, as you can see, should give you some pride of ownership. Built well. Slant break on here. 14 by one millimeter left hand thread. So you can put a different muzzle device on there. You probably should, but this works, it's okay. It's a cost saver and for that matter, it's a weight saver. There are a couple variations from a traditional pure AK variant rifle. You might notice on the RAS 47. One is there is no cleaning rod right here. Thank you, Sentry Arms. I am so glad they didn't put that in there. It's just added weight. I take it out anyhow. I never run my cleaning rod. All the way from the inception of TMP, I just don't do it. Uh, I'm all about first cool once again. Also, there is no bayonet lug right there. I'm a little bit less enthused about that. I, I kind of like the bayonet lug on an AK. I, I just like it. It's kind of an in your face to the protectionist. I would never use it. It's just you know, a little bit added weight, you know, when it's on there. So I, neither of those features or lack thereof in any way would dissuade me from buying the gun. Not at all. There might be some purists out there you're like, hey man, you, you can't do that. That's not pure. Well, Go look at the latest variations of AK rifles and then talk to me. It looks like they are morphing into AR-15s, M4s, M16s. Yeah, so where's the purity in that? Just saying, you know. That is the features review. Down and dirty firepower is standard and that will take us to a very short look at the magazine that was causing a problem with this gun. And I mean a huge problem. A Bulgarian 40 clear. Yeah, it was an issue. It did not feed at all in the RAS 47. As you can see, I'm showing you the footage. You may have shown it before I got to this point. Whew, it was bad. Why is that? Well, it was very loose, or I should say is very loose in the magwell. I was going to come to this. Now, if we look at this Magpul one, that is standard wiggle. That's what she said. In the magwell. You know, it's, it's normal. I'm going to show you another gun. It's normal. This one wiggled a little bit more. So best I can tell, the feed angle was changed. I don't know. Uh, I retired that one. Threw in a pretty excellent and very reliable, in most guns, Topco 20 round, and I had a couple jams out of this one. What? Topco suck. Here comes Sharknado effect. No, they do not. Topco AK mags, and for that matter, AR-15 mags, are really good. They're super lightweight, they're affordable, they're strong, they're almost indestructible, even though they're not steel reinforced. They have a steel you know, base plate on them. They're, they're awesome. For whatever reason though, with various ammunitions, they just 
Uh, I think it's like four stoppages coming in the rass. I, I know. I'm just telling you as it is. Shooting straight and hitting the ball straight. So I threw in the Magpul 30s, and they ran great. Go figure. What was it, man? I don't know. I don't know. I was I was surprised too. You know, I'm 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 of the school of thought the AK should just run, 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 run. But it is what it is. So firepower is pretty excellent. That is to say, AK standard. You might want to just stick with the Magpul magazines. I did not test the standard steel mags. I don't run those. They're just too damn heavy. I'm talking steel from whatever country you want magazines for the AK. There's so many great mags out there. Magpul, Tapcos. Um, just to name a couple, you can go with U.S. Palm if you want, uh, but I like the ones you can take apart better. That will take us to uh, accuracy. Here we go. Uh, let me say this. I've said it before in other reviews. If a gun is not accurate, at least to le my own personal level, my enthusiasm for it is going to wane. That will come through and has come through on the tabletop. Uh, I do make certain allowances for an AK variant rifle. It's not free-floated. It is an AK there's larger tolerances. I, I don't really expect it to shoot into MOA. I have seen it happen. And I will say this gun pretty much came close to that. And that is a big selling point on the quality of the barrel. Which if I did not say so, I did say it's nitride coated, which is awesome. Not, not chromed, but nitride, which is a smoother, more consistent finish. And it's 4150 steel. The receiver, by the way, is 4140 steel. Uh, the barrel quality, I think, is pretty excellent. Not CHF, like we said. Here we go to the... I want to start us out at 50 yards. And it is just what it is. I mean, there's no editing with this accuracy stuff. Never has been. There's Wolf at 50 yards. And I'm shooting this, the Leopold VXR illuminated scope, 30mm tube. Such a great scope. Go look at my scope video. I talk all about it. It's pretty lightweight for what it is, too. There's Wolf. Golden Tiger was unimpressive out of this gun all day long, by the way. Wolf 20, 124 grain. You'll see that that was basically the surprise star performer. I was really surprised. 50 yards again. Uh, Golden Tiger, Wolf, Wolf. That's pretty good, but that's only 50 yards. Here we go, backing it up to 100. And keep in mind, this is not from a concrete bench at the shooting range. As always, it's out in the desert on a damn polymer table. Now, granted, there was no wind that day, and that's good. Here's Golden Tiger. That's a good group. That is, uh, I mean, for that flyer, if it wasn't for that, you're looking at 1.3 MOA. That's a, if it gets an up arrow, like you see there, that's a good group. Red Army did not shoot well. And I've seen that out of multiple guns. This SD is just way up there. Uh, I'm going to, at this point, roll in some screen velocities as I'm talking here, just for your own edification. There'll be another video posting about that. There's Red Army. Wah! Golden Tiger. Yeah, it's okay. That's actually pretty good AK accuracy. If someone shoots a group like that off an AK uh, with an optic, if they do it with an iron sight, I'm like, whoa, really good. Uh, that's good. But it got better. I'm glad to report. I wouldn't say this is totally representative, but it's you know, the gun can do this. Here is a five shot group and that's by the way what you've been looking at is five shot groups 124 grain jacket of hollow point out of wolf that's i'm going to call that a moa group discounting just that one round damn son that's good look at this another five rounds one two three four five off a of polymer table this was by the way yesterday yesterday sick hornady sst love that round because it's a very ballistically efficient round pretty dang accurate uh, i was surprised however that wolf jack and hollow point uh, almost beat it look at this group that's a three shot group of hornady sst out of the ras 47 bxr three by nine off polymer table desert i will call the accuracy therefore uh, excellent really excellent i, I wouldn't say outstanding because outstanding means every group comes in about an inch and a half to an inch, which is a hard task for a stamped receiver AK. But I will say the accuracy is every bit as good as the SG SGL Arsenals, uh, better than the Zastava NPAP, definitely, um, and a little bit better than the C39 V2s that I tested. There you go. Take it or leave it, take it or leave it. Track record, oh, here we go. And I'm gonna, well, Field strip is standard. You guys know field strip. But I'm going to show you that Trunion. And I have not looked at it. I haven't prepped it. I haven't gained this in any way. Let's just see. 
what it looks like. This is such a waste of time because I know it's going to be fine. But uh, whatever. Play the game. We'll dispel the Sharknado myth. Uh, let me say, though, this is not a 10,000 round torture test. I'm not saying it is. I don't have the time, interest, or money, or the motivation to do it. I just don't. This has a ventilated piston, by the way. Save a little bit of weight. Huh. That's about 500 rounds, guys. Seriously. Uh, yeah, of course we're not going to see anything. It's fine. Don't even worry about it. There's a look at the rack one trigger while we're at it. Thought it was supposed to have a retention plate in there, but it looks like it has a shepherd's hook to hold the fire control components in. I don't know. I like retention plates better if I have to get in it. It's just so much easier. There's a look at the bolt of the RAS 47. United States produced AK. Uh, and by the way, of course, as you know, they're not the only ones. There's several U.S. produced AKs on the market. Uh, I'm sure they're excellent, too. Really, maybe I get around to reviewing those, too. I like competition. I think competition's cool. Yeah, it gives us better products for cheaper, and I'm all about that. So that's Field Strip, AK Standard, and a quick look at the Sharknado trunnion issue of the RAS 47. Yeah, that's just how I look at it. I just don't think it's an issue at all. Um, you know, if you shoot, seriously, you know, tens of thousands of rounds. Man, I'd just like to know who you are and how you afford it. Not just money, but time. I mean, out of one type of gun. You know, I shoot thousands of rounds, but not out of one type or one single gun. I don't have time. Uh, incidentally, I forgot to tell you, there is a hold open notch in the safety lever. Well done. And that will take us, I guess, to accessories. Coming to an end here. Oh, so sad on the Sharknado RAS 47 review. Uh, there's not much you need for it. Like I said, the Magpul Edition has it for me. I love the forend. I love the grip. I put that grip, by the way, on pretty much every AK I have. For now, is there going to be something better coming out? Maybe. I just love it. It's solid. It's hand filling. I know. Insert your latest. Uh, that's what she said thing. Love the stock. You know. Uh, once I put, I should say I love it once I put the extension pad on it and then it'll be better. If you need a shorter overall length, then put on the Zukov S, the folding stock that Magpul makes. And here comes my much beloved Arsenal Duracoat and an FDE. It was featured in that video with the Zukov on it. And I do have this riding in a certain system. I won't tell you what where I need a super short overall length, and that's where the Zukov comes into play, in addition to having an adjustable length of pull, which is a huge plus to me. Uh, there's those polymer rails I was talking about, at least one of them, right? And you can see I still trust the Tapco 20, and this gun is hot, incidentally. Running nothing more than the Wolf, the JHP Wolf that I just told you that shot so well. Uh, great gun, though, but look at the the thickness of the barrel compared to the SGL. I'm not going to lift them both up, but visually you can see it's a thicker barrel on the RAS, and that might, you know, get to the weight on it. It is a little bit heavier than the old Arsenal guns. Uh, the AKs are a little bit heavier, maybe a lot heavier than an equivalent AR-15 system. They just are. My latest AR-15 builds are so light, so fast, it's hard to beat them. In terms of SAWC, hard to beat them. But I love the caliber of 7.62.39. It defeats obstacles better. It hits hard. Uh, I just love it. it. Can I carry as many of them for the same weight? Mm. Go watch my a, you know, AR-15 versus AK-47 series of videos posted like eons ago. I talk about it all there. Yeah, Accessories though. I was going to mention this. Uh, the Rack 1 trigger. I love it. You might consider this though. This is the ALG AK trigger. It's from ALG Defense. And it is really excellent. It is uh, a little bit of a job, a project to install. You might have a gunsmith do it. I do it myself. Um, they pull so nice. That SGL right here is running one. Right here. It will pull, if memory serves, around 
four pounds super quick crisp the alg trigger it's my favorite one i've uh, had uh, no plans to put that on there though and all kinds of different variations but if you're going to pull any of this off this this or this get the cheaper wood version save a little bit, bit of money um there you go the only thing i would consider is maybe putting the ultimac ford mounted optics rail in there i love that once again at the top my recommended retailers for this gun price is going to run around 630 dollars for wood give or take about 650 for the moe version totally worth it get the moe version if like me you're about first cool functionality durability and maybe later on if you want to code ability you want to just put a code on it like i did Cerakote fd once again uh, lots of good options. Uh, Sentry Arms C39 V2. Love that gun. It is a milled receiver, a little bit heavier. Still excellent. Last time I checked, was not including an optics rail. I think that's changing, though. Uh, I would not buy an AK now without an optics rail. Absolutely not. This, is, again, is the excellent but uber expensive RS Regulate rail no it didn't come in that color i coded it as well the stava impap pap series of rifles very good inter arms is importing some hungarian guns which i haven't shot i'm sure they're good all the standards are still out there foreign made guns all types of use you can look in those kalishnikov usa their us 32 series of rifles could be really really good there are a lot of custom ak rifles there i think i made mention of them earlier in the video but, uh, but that's just not for me. I doubt I will ever review them because I just can't bring them to my audience and say, hey, this is a great way to spend $2,000, $2,500 on a single stamped receiver AK. No. Not when you get one this good. I mean, damn, son. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, like I said, and I came clean with, there were a couple stoppages out of this mag and that Bulgarian but, you know, hundreds of rounds running through these, it was great. So I don't think it was a gun. I think it was, whatever reason, the mag interface with this gun. Check it out. I think you'll be super happy. Uh, I wouldn't believe all the negativity on the gun. Again, I'm not a metallurgist, um, but um, I'm going to keep this one. You know, if I sincerely, if I thought it was an issue, I would dump it. Dump it. Review it. Out the door it goes. Not going to do it. You know, you may see it in the years to come. None fancy project. Thanks for watching. The RAS 47 by Century.